Hello and welcome. I am Bavin and teaching .NET at ICD. The main objective of today is to learn something about types of subroutines available in Visual Basic .NET. So, first of all, main advantage of creating a user-defined subroutine or method is write once and run n number of times so once we can write n number of times we can call a same subroutine <laughs> next in case of modification we need sorry we need to modify at single location so that's another advantage there are three types of subroutines available in visual basic dot net sub which perform but does not return value function which return a value property use used to provide encapsulation and I like to start with the sub so how do I create my user defined subroutine so let's check it out okay I'll say this document I'll open .NET 2005 I have already a small project name types of subroutines and that's what so we'll start with the first subroutine name display message so my job is to display some message so I'll say private sub display message and end sub. This is what the body of the subroutine. Fine. Even events are a subroutine, right? But they'll raise whenever user click on a specific button and within the display message our job is to display message box dot show say good evening comma and I'll call this is what the display message right. so this is implementation and here call it's a subroutine call so we'll run and click and then I have message a same message or same subroutine call can be called multiple times so I'll select one more button once again we'll call display message so here is once we can create then after we can call multiple times okay let's say if I were to modify so instead of good evening my job is to display good morning So we have to modify exact only one place. Fine. Now, next question is how do I create sub 
routing it with arguments right so here our job is to create a subroutine which display a user defined message so we'll say private serve this message to create an argument msg a string so msg act as an argument so message box dot show msg so we'll display It's argument. So we'll call this message. There is an error. Error. As we have specified an argument with the name msg as a parameter, msg define a string. So we have to pass string as an argument. We may pass either finite string. Let's say we will do it. Uh, we may get a message from the user so uh, we may pass something like text box one dot text so our this message oh it's not display message our disp message composed of one argument so msg is an argument whatever will pass within the double quotes string right will available to msg and that msg will be appear within the message box first time it's a finite string next time it's blank oops okay so do it we'll do it and next is in from the text box running through it okay. okay let's create one more method which composed of two arguments so now message as well as title both pass by the user So I'll say private serve disp alert and this alert contains two argument msg a string comma title a string. So message box contained as well as title both passed by the user. So here this pallet is a subroutine composed of two argument message as well as title as string and message box dot show first msc comma title. So now our this pallet composed of two argument right our this alert composed of two argument one of the argument with the name msc with pass as a string as well as title with pass as a string okay i'll create one more button to call this method so we'll say display message either call this alert okay so this alert first argument will be passed by user from text box one dot text comma next argument passed by user as a text box two dot text right. so first argument is an msg a string the second argument title a string let's run okay as a first Visual basic dot net second types of sub. So that's what first argument appear in the message, second argument appear in a title bar. So that's how we can create 
a subroutine which may contains more than one argument. Fine. Okay. Thanks. From ICD. In the next session, we'll discuss how do I create user-defined functions. This is what how do I create user-defined subroutines. So, in the next section, we'll define more thing about subroutine.